So, first things first, gentlemen, how are you? Very good. Good. We arrived in Amsterdam uh, a couple hours ago. We played the milk wag tonight. Started the tour last night by doing Rock and Ring. Um, it was awesome. Tool played. Okay. Good stuff. And then I did see a clip on uh, Instagram of a marsh pit that kind of you generated. Yes, it was a, a lar very large wall of death. <laughs> it was and, very exciting to see. And to see that on the first day of tour, what what does that kind of is that a good starting point of where well, it's... I didn't I think well because we were, we were kind of keeping an eye on the stage for a little bit and we weren't really sure because we've never played any of the big festivals out here. Mm. Um, so when we got on stage, I, I think we we're all kind of very surprised to see the outcome and how you know, how people were taking to us and very large mosh pits and walls of death, it was, it was really cool. But that's an interesting point because obviously you've done quite well in, uh, in the States and when you come over to Europe, and is that always a, kind of a, a not, worry might be too big a word, but... It's only our, it's not a worry, it's just we know there's some work to do over here. Mm -hmm. It's only our second time here. So expectations um, are being managed, you know, just kind of... Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, we've both toured a bunch. We know what it, what it takes to come over here and keep coming, sure. keep coming, keep coming and building. So this is only our second time here. So yesterday was a delight. Okay. You know, starting off with Rock and Ring. It doesn't get much better than that. And the crowd response was better than I expected. Okay. So you can only ask for so much and just keep working. And if we jump back to the beginning uh, very quickly now, then uh, John, because you kind of started this whole thing. And um, when you, when you, when you envisioned what Bad Wolf was going to be, did you envision going over to Europe at some point and kind of where you are now? Sure, but it really wasn't like I envisioned what Bad Wolves was going to okay. be. I mean, I started just writing music and where it started is completely different where it ended. And I can tell you this, I certainly didn't envision the success we've had this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we all know the story of Zombie and how that happened. So um, it's just, you know, that's just beyond an experience that I ever imagined. You know, I, I always say in interviews, I thought we'd be in a van for three years and, you know, um, things have just moved very quickly for us, so I'm very grateful. And then, Kyle, for you then, uh, when you joined uh, the band, what was your expectation? Because you all, like you said, you all have been in bands before and you, all, you kind of know this world. Yeah. Uh, John and Doc and Tommy had asked me a few times to join the band. Uh, I was doing another band at the time, and uh, around, uh, you know, December of 2017, like this is after we filmed the Learn to Live video, and I was just like, yeah, I'll do it. I really, I was just, I didn't really know what was gonna happen. I didn't really have any expectations. And then John and Doc both called me or in mid-December of 2017, and they said, you know, hey, we're gonna have some shows. Like, you know, I know you're doing your other band, but uh, we'd really prefer to have you than have to get a fill-in. And I was just like, things had kind of started going downhill with my other band, and I was just like, you know what? Like, I have give gave that band five years. I really think that I should give these guys a wholehearted shot and just focus my time with Bad Wolves and just see where it went. And, uh, and I didn't expect anything like this. Like, I was kind of thinking like, John, like, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to work really hard for the next few years and maybe we can get to a level to where you know we have you know a bigger name and uh and i was definitely not expecting this because this was a month before we shot the zombie video mm. so like i had heard zombie but i hadn't really none of that stuff had happened yet sure. all the stuff that had happened so i was just like i'm just gonna go with it and and just kind of see what what it brings and obviously i think i made the right choice <laughs> interesting to say hard work though Hard work in its own right, building a band is one thing, and then when things pop off like they did for us, that's a whole other level of hard work. <laughs> yeah. So it has been hard work. Like yeah. I did the most shows I've done in a year last year on top of that writing a record. Like it's, it's been like really, this is just as hard on different you know, psychological levels. You kind of have to keep up with, with the success that you're pushed into. Yeah, as yeah. management says, strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> and well, the, when we kind of uh, started off then, uh, because you all played in different bands, what, and maybe it's too early days uh, to say, but what, what made this group click? What made this work? I was writing music for a while, but when Tommy joined the band is what really we started going, okay, we had one goal of not writing a record, or sorry, writing a record that had mainly not, not all screaming. Um, 
and I could not find a singer that I thought was good enough to carry the weight of that. And then when Tommy came in, I was like, okay, so we found like it was easier to paint the picture of when you hear the voice, what you're actually capable of. But we still missed the mark on a, a lot of things on the first record because we just had to keep going and get it done because we like had a deal and stuff. So this second record was more of a, you know, knowing what you're doing with what your singer. It's weird when you're writing music with no singer because you don't really know, you know, not everything works out like that. When you wrote those songs, did you have Tommy in mind, or was it still no, blank slate? No, I just, I just knew. No, I didn't have anybody in okay. mind. Um, it started off a lot more experimental, and then I got, I missed playing heavy music, so then it got heavy, and yeah, you know, and that's kind of what you get. You get songs like, <clears throat> excuse me, you get songs like "Hear Me Now," and <laughs> you get songs like, you know, I don't know, "Learn to Live." But that's an interesting point because there there is a good mix uh, of, of heavy music, but then also more uh, melodic, accessible yeah. rock music. We thought about so. keeping some of that stuff okay. off the record, and then we made a conscious decision to come out of the gate of like this is who we are. We're um, <clears throat> we're eclectic, <laughs> uh, you know. Because some people make an all heavy record, then they start doing lighter stuff later. We wanted to do that right from the get go, so there was no we are like our fan base, or it doesn't look like we're misconstruing any kind of. Uh, plan of like being heavy and grabbing those people then selling out or something yeah. you know, that's what you call it when it's sure. like you know even though we've been in metal bands the majority of our careers like especially me and John like we don't just listen to metal mm. you know like me and him love like Huey Lewis in the news and you know like power pop and sure. stuff like that so it's just it makes sense to have a like be playing in a band when you like all those different genres of music and not just metal to do something that's more accessible on the radio because we we both enjoy those types of songs as well yeah it's mm. interesting it's still as scary when you've been doing metal your whole life to be like Ugh. like you feel like that that trap that okay. you're not allowed to do anything that's like not that heavy and like you know i remember when we decided to put hear me now on the record i was like It's yeah. kind of like, it, it makes you a little nervous because you think you're going to disappoint all this, you know, purists and stuff. And then, then you just take that step and you're like, thank God I didn't like kind of, hold actually one of the times didn't go with my gut. Mm. Yeah. That worked. Didn't, you know? didn't kind of hold back yeah. of what, you know, we decided to put on the album because, you know, like I said, we like so much different types of music. It's, it, I think a lot of bands, like he said, get trapped in the, you know, metal elitist, sure. you know, type thing. Which is awesome because some of those records are my favorite. Yeah, like of course. that's what they do, do it. But like, I think we decided pretty early on that we weren't going to be some purist metal band. Yeah, from from a creative standpoint, yeah. you didn't want to limit yourself in that sense. Limit's not the wrong word. It's just we just we've all done that enough. Sure, and like yeah. number one goal of mine when I started this is I do not want it to sound like Devil Driver, okay. which is my old band. Which is you know I wrote a lot of music in that too, so it took a long time to like figure out how to like change that and mm. not because you know most guys that start another band it's usually like oh it sounds like they're old band but worse you know so yeah. just took we took our sweet time in terms of writing to make sure that didn't happen mm. and w one thing uh, in terms of uh, the audience then uh, in this regard I think you've done quite well because I I, I noticed that, uh, interactions with very young fans as well young girls who come to the shows and so because so of zombie the demographic is completely different than anything we've ever been a part of there's moms and daughters and Like all my friends say, all my you know five year old won't stop listening to Zombie, mm -hmm. and that's mainly due to Zombie, okay. um, which is explains the demographic expansion of anything we've done. Yeah, it, well, it's just it's really accessible, because you know there's no swear words, you know it's a positive message, mm. um, and it you know it can be played on pretty practically every every radio station. So I think with the accessibility of that song, we're going to open up a, a, a huge demographic from anyone from four years old to 50 years old. Not to mention radio in general with Hear Me Now and Remember yeah. When. That's just, those are uh, avenues um, neither of us have been a part of radio. So yeah. that definitely brings um, different crowds. And now has that affected the way you started writing for the second album? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because you, you kind of You're finding your lane, you know. Um, you know, we made a, a somewhat heavy record. You know, it's like, but then we're like, do we? Are we going to be Slipknot and go Iowa? You know, and just be like, fuck everybody, you know. But no, we kind of like with the label we're on, and we're comfortable with like Jackie Kaiser, who really works us really good at radio. Kind of like writing songs that we're comfortable with, that we feel have integrity, that 
also will work with the program of the people and that can do their job the best with the product that we give, you know? Sure. It sounds like business, but there's still a lot of heart and creativity that goes into it. Sure. And especially this time around, and uh, like you said before, uh, the first record, you wrote those songs and um, you didn't have a kind of a, a vision of what the band was. Yeah. So now that you do, how, how has that affected kind of the, the type of songs that come out? For instance, having Kyle and knowing that Kyle is going to play certain bits. and Yeah, well, it just affects it because through touring a lot, we've real, we've, we were able to hone in on the second record where our strengths are. Yeah. And we realize what songs kind of don't really strike with many people okay. on the record, um, which is, you know, for the most part, some of the stuff that was a little bit too techy. Um, so we kind of like simplified a bit, but there's still some rager bangers on there for sure. But um, and what works live, we've been playing arenas like a lot. And you yeah. realize that like faster kind of stuff like that, it's just harder for people to, to sync that in. So we're... You know, you start writing for the crowds that you're playing for a little bit in terms of sizes of places, you know. And then how would you say the uh, second album now? Because it, am I right in saying it's finished? It's done. Okay. Um, how, how does it compare to the previous record? Is it kind of an extension of, of uh, what the first record was meant to be in a way? Yeah, when I play it for some of my friends, they're like, this sounds like, it's funny, they already say it, like, it sounds like classic Bad, bad Wolves, you know, when you... <laughs> playing some of the heavier stuff. Mm. And then um, everyone who hears like the, the kind of uh, lighter stuff, they're like, it sounds like that, but like, you know, more focused, yeah. more fatter, uh, just- A little more mature. Mature, voice. smarter. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that, that's an interesting point because um, did you kind of have to, I, I can imagine, did you have to get used to each other in a, in a way, especially early on? Well, uh, I, I, I came from, you know, I've come from a situation where I played with a lot of different bands, mm. and uh, <laughs> I've known John for about maybe six or seven years on and off. Um, I've known Tommy for 13 years. I've known Doc for 10 years. Uh, the only person I didn't really know coming into the band that I met at the Learn to Live video shoot was Chris. But I mean, I, I don't know. I think all of our, uh, especially when it comes to our musical style, I think we all kind of mesh really well just because we all kind of come from a similar background. Mm. Um, and like me being a bass player, um, having John, uh, who I, even before I joined the band, I thought was a super underrated metal drummer. Um, it's just nice to have somebody who I can get, I can click with. Mm -hmm. Cause I've been in plenty of bands where I'm just like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we grew the first record. Tommy and I had like, um, you know, a lot of, so call them meltdowns in terms of creative differences. Okay. Um, and then this time around, you know, touring together, knowing that we had to do that again, we, w we worked better together in terms of like being a little bit more giving on each, mm. each other's, okay, you really want that? Okay, fine, you know, and vice versa. Uh, and, you know, Doc came into the fold and we were like, you know, because he helped a bit on the end of the last record and then like, you know, there was stuff with this where it was a learning process of, of, him learning how me and Tommy cut the shit out of everything and like, you know, and he was like, well, wait, this is my song. You know, it's like, well, we got to make this all work for everybody. So was, there's a learning process there, but it's, it's getting smoother and smoother as we go. Did, did you self produce again? Yeah, I'd say me, me and Tommy produced it. And then I would say um, this guy, Joseph McQueen, who tracks Tommy's vocals also okay. has a huge, um, I feel like I'm the underdog, like, and it's him and Joseph on the same team, and it's me. But uh, yeah, uh, I would say he like you know producing. He made a lot of edits and okay. suggestions. Because I can imagine, especially when you're doing it yourself, and kind of what you touch upon is that that you you start become protective of certain things of uh, certain bits of. Uh, I think songs. I'm least guilty of that. <laughs> okay. Because. I think the more you write, the more you're willing to part with things because everything's not okay. so special to you. Mm. No, like I'm literally like, sure, get rid of it. Okay. Like, you know, or don't, I don't, you know, like I'm pretty easy going. And cause usually in the end, I've had those arguments, I'm sure you have, yeah. you like these band arguments are so big about this one fucking part. And then three years later, you're like, yeah, oh God, that literally <laughs> didn't matter. So I always go back to that. Just like, okay. is this really a big deal? Yeah. Like we were arguing about double bass on the end of one of these choruses and I told Tommy, I said, Literally in two years, if that double bass is there or not, it's not going to affect this record whatsoever, you know? So take it out, you know? But I was just making a point, like, 
just pick and choose your battles as much as you can, you know, because yeah. the little things sometimes don't matter that much. Yeah, but that's, uh, I mean, I've interviewed a lot of bands, and that, that's a very level-headed way of looking at it. It's, it can be difficult, I suppose. Yeah, it can be. Um, I just try and not be so passionate about, I wrote it, it's got to be this way. Mm. Yeah. Because in terms of the themes, then, uh, I don't know what, uh, to what extent the songs were, were finished on Disobey when, before the kind of the band was formed, um, but the themes and, and the direction, uh, how much of that came later? Most of it was written before really, like Chris was in the band the whole okay. time, but Chris was like a full-time tech for like chain smokers and all these mm. pop acts. So he didn't have too much time to help contribute because he was so busy. And then Doc came in and Doc helped with like no masters and did some solos and helped like little pits in there. Um, but most of the direction musically was done, uh, I think, before everyone got involved. So this why that's why I think the second record's better. It's a bit more of, um, it's not just like a one or two man vision. It's mm. more of a, a group vision. And obviously now you know that there is an audience, and like you said, it's it's a bigger audience than than you expected at this point. So, um, what what. What, what, what are the themes kind of in the, in the songs this time around in, in trying to, uh, that you're trying to kind of give the audience to think about? It's more of a Tommy question, okay. but in general, there are songs that deal with, you know, a lot of, it's always there's going to be a personal level with Tommy with, I think, sure. some of the trauma he's been through and stuff. So there's, you know, there's, you know, there's a, abuse you know mm. um depression suicide stuff like that um we're not actually we're a little less like you know we, i don't think there's like an officer down on this record where we chose a, a political stance okay. to to explore and talk about um so i think this record's a bit more personal but to sum it up well uh, let me ask it a little bit diff differently then because i can imagine you've all been around you've been in bands so you've, you've seen uh, ups and downs uh, along the way um, what does it take, in a sense, to to have some sense of longevity in in a rock or metal band? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Like, it feels good right now. I think we're yeah. Uh, even longevity can be questions of how hard we worked, mm. and like it, like little inner turmoils can start seeping in. You know, because we're we're a group, brand new group, and we had to like reconvene before like we started going out again. Like, all right, let's fix this. Let's fix this. Let's yeah. let's like so longevity is just like. It's it's up to you, but there's no yeah there's no road to follow, and if you do, it always works. It's mm. just, yeah, I just I, I think with us, it's like a lot like our band relation, like our our band is like it, you know being in a band in general is a lot like being in a relationship, sure. but instead of dealing with one other person, you're dealing with four other personalities, and I just think you know um, not really compromise, but just understanding the needs of other people, and it's just like you know, do I really need to you know, do I really need this if it's going to upset that person? No, I don't. You know, it's just, I really think, you know, understanding each other's personalities and, you know, learning how to navigate said personalities helps with the longevity of a band. Mm. And, and then musically, yeah, go ahead, write a masterpiece. You'll probably have some longevity, but that's easier said than done. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then you mentioned that you're very much in line musically, but uh, Kyle, is there one band or art artist that you love that John hates? I don't. I don't know. Me and you get get along pretty well when it comes to. There's not much music. I, there's not much music I hate. Yeah, he's not a music hater. Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like unless it's like mumble rap. Then mm. I'm, I'm. I mean, I. But then I just won't listen to it. Yeah, I just yeah. go. Hmm. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. See you later. Yeah, I guess everyone loves it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's not much like I can't turn this off or anything. No. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the, the younger generation thing, because that's kind of uh, what I was getting at as well with, with the younger people in your crowd, but can you see this new generation uh, of young people that are listening to metal and are listening to, to hardcore and rock? And Not so much, Okay. like in my opinion, like, and I, know, I don't mean that like, I just know that the guitar is dying quite a bit. Mm. This is just some stuff like talking to some of my friends who have kids in high school, they're like, no one plays guitar okay. in high school, yeah. like no one. Um, it's just electronic stuff is kind of more of the here and now. Um, well, that's so not saying rock is dead, sure. um, but um, I have no idea what the next generation, like like you're talking like 11 and 10 year olds, what their vision of rock is going to be. Yeah. 
Um, I can't see where it's going. I don't know, I just said like the electronic side of it is just so much more accessible. Like you get an iPhone, you get an iPad, you buy a computer, it's got programs that have keyboards and drums already built into it, you know? So if you, you wanted to mess around with keyboards, you can easily do that. You know, with, with it like being guitar, you know, I think having, I'm not sure if people have quite the attention span that they used to of having to sit down and learn how to actually play their instrument when they can just figure out how to mess around and make cool sounds, you know? Because this is, I find it a fascinating thing because I suppose when you, if, if you go back to your, your early days when you uh, started to learn your instruments, um, what was the drive, what was the passion, uh, especially early on, that age, 10, 11? Just I don't the know love of music. Okay. Yeah, the obsession of Metallica. <laughs> yeah, mine, my, mine was Green Day. I was eight years old and I was, uh, I was watching them on like MTV and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. My older brothers, I have 10 or 11 years older than me, they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. And now they're like, oh, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, that cool feeling when you would like put on the headphones and play to a Metallica song. And like when you're just, your imagine can run pretty wild when you're younger. Like you felt like you were in the band when yeah. you would play like that. Mm -hmm. I just like in my head, I was like in Metallica. And that was just, a, that feeling was the biggest escape of, of my childhood ever. Okay. So that was a big drive for me. What, what was it about b this music, and then not necessarily specifically uh, Metallica, but what was it about being able to escape in music and, and realize... Stay with music? Uh, no, escape. Escaping in music, kind of... Kind I don't know, we wrote a song about it on this record, like how we kind of miss and yearn for those moments like of discovering music and how, how much of an escape it was and how much it <coughs> pulled us... <coughs> not like I'm getting choked up. Uh, <laughs> pulled us through just our childhoods. Um, it's a really cool song. Um, I'm, I'm not supposed to say any titles or anything, but we wrote a song about it. Okay. And, um, and that was my idea to bring up that topic because I think about, it's almost like a little movie when you think about your childhood discovering your favorite bands and how mm -hmm. obsessed you became it and what, what it just takes you down this path. It's like, and it, look how far it's taken me, you know? Yeah. But what is it like then? Because I can imagine you get quite a, a, a bunch of comments from fans then who have a similar uh, response to your music. So what, what is that like that you're now in, this, in a position where people can find something in your music and connect, and connect with it? And I don't know. I don't think about it that much. Okay. Um, but it's just awesome to do something that is respected or bought or looked at or watched. It just means a lot to me. But I don't wonder like... I don't compare his experience. I don't know the person. You like, do you, do you ever think about like, you know, how like when you were a kid, like you were Lars, do you think there's like kids out there like, I'm, I'm Berkland. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like one kid, but there was millions of kids that wanted to be Lars, you know? <laughs> no, but I can definitely imagine uh, people, because people can obviously connect to your music and they can, they can find something. Yeah, like I'm not that. arguing that. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Like, yeah. Um, it's not something I think about. It's a bit of a mind warp. Yeah, I think it's kind of. It's kind, I think it's kind of narcissistic to think <laughs> about. Like, yeah. there's there's some little kid out there pretending to be Kyle. You know, how many kids tonight are just thinking about me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but with uh, finally then, because uh, now the second album is. Uh, do you have an album title yet? Yeah, we have all that stuff, but. Um, can't talk about it. Yeah, we can't talk about it. I, 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 talk about it. We've just been, you know, like our label has a plan of announcements of stuff like that so um, we just not really letting our lips mm. slip on stuff but having kind of reached uh, a certain level of success with bad wolves uh, within a period that you didn't expect what, what do you do you now have expectations for the second one or is no it? <laughs> um, zombie is like what you would call lightning in a bottle I don't think that I mean those kind of songs for a band like us come along and almost never you know, the reach that thing had, that's multi-platinum around the world. That's not something that's on my checkbook list again. Um, I just believe from now on, we're just going to go back to doing it the hard way. And um, I think it gave us a big platform to start on, which is great. Nice push. Yeah, and I think we have a trajectory that is looking very good. But I always manage my... I'm, I'm, people have been known to call me a pessimist. So um, I just know if you put the hard work in, it won't fail. But I'm not sitting there going, all right, next one's got to be, there's got to be a zombie number two on this. It's a cover song, you know? It's like, yeah. it's, it's, you, you kind of can't put that pressure on yourself. No, in a way. pressure or just put the idea in your head. It's mm. dumb, you know? Yeah.
then maybe unrealistic. And if something hits, uh, you know, maybe better than, you know, hear me now or remember when, but I don't think any of us, you know, we're not like expecting there to be like, all right, boys, more platinum <laughs> records. Yeah, yeah, like on a larger scale, like look at Inner Sandman. Metallica never had another Inner Sandman, but does it matter? You know, that's a much larger scale. Like, you know, I, lo I, lo I always talk about Lars on this one, but he said a good quote one time. He's like, you know, you only get one black album in your mm. career. You know, you get one back in black, you get one Blood Sugar Sex Magic. You know, it's like, yeah. and that, I think Zombie might be that, that moment for us, but like, we're gonna be just fine with continuing on what we do.